Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And in light of Halloween coming up here, what I want to do is show you how to get a Walking Dead style effect to any one of your photos. So here's a screen capture from the introduction of The Walking Dead, one of my favorite television shows. I didn't think I'd ever get into zombies, but I absolutely love this show because to me it's more about the human element than it is about the zombies. Anyway, so before I you know get into too much on The Walking Dead because this season rocks, I'm going to look at this photograph. Now here is my overall Walking Dead effect on my original image. So it does a pretty good of in, good job of getting you that Walking Dead style effect that we're seeing here in, in some of these intro photographs that are on The Walking Dead. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to tell you that there was a whole bunch of hard work involved in this. And uh, if you look, if you're on YouTube and you look in the description, you can go ahead and download the action for Photoshop CC. If not, if you're on the website, there's going to be a little button that says download right above this video and you'll be able to download the action too. But I really want you to see how this is done. So don't just skip ahead and go to the action because I want you to see kind of the thought process that gets involved when you're looking at these styles of photos, especially because if you want to make your own action based off of a look or something that you see online, you kind of have to know what it is that you're going to be doing to that photo to get that look. So I'm going to dissect how I look at these photographs to make these actions along the way. So the first thing, first and foremost thing we need to do is kind of get a tilt shift blur effect that you're seeing here in this photograph. So I'm going to press Command or Control J and duplicate that background layer. Go to Filter, and if you're using Photoshop CC, Blur Gallery, Tilt Shift. Press Enter. And that's going to give us this overall tilt shift look. Now, I went with a blanket tilt shift look. I wasn't trying to do anything crazy or shift it at all. I just wanted to get the middle of the eye uh, right that that field of view and kind of blur everything on the top and the bottom to get that kind of look and feel. The next thing we need to do is subdue the saturation a little bit in the photograph. And one of the ways you can do that is by making a new layer, press Shift F5 to fill it with black, and then we're going to change that to color. And that's going to give us an overall black and white photo, but if we drop the opacity down to something like, I don't know, 40%, you can see that it gives us a nice kind of vintagey, old school grunge look. It's a very effective technique and you can do it with all different types of colors, but I'm going to choose to do it with black here. So the next thing I need to do is look at the overall photograph. What I'm looking at here is the levels of the RGB and, and basically what's happening with the green and the highlights of this photo. I'm trying to replicate that same type of look. So I'm going to go and go to levels and in the levels adjustment here what I want to do also is just kind of give this a little bit more look to it. So I'm going to pull in on the left hand side to make the darks a little darker, the lights a little bit lighter and then I'm going to go to the RGB channel and go to green and then right here I'm just going to drag this over so that the overall photo gets a little bit more green. The next thing I need to do is kind of map out the colors that are happening here because I saw that when I did that, it, it made the overall photo more green, but there's some things here that are interesting. Like if we look at the, the whites, the whites have this very dark green to them. The blacks almost have a brown color to them, and then the 50% gray areas also have their own color to them. So I'm going to press uh, Control alt and then just the minus button to make my image a little bit smaller because the next thing I'm going to do is actually going to make a gradient map here. But when I make this gradient map, I want to select certain things from the original photograph to kind of get that overall look and feel to those areas. So what I'm going to do is actually just click on that gradient map and right here I'm going to click on the, the whites, just double click the white until you get the color picker. And I'm going to click somewhere in here that I know is white. Right here, this would be a specular highlight right here where light is beaming in maybe through a tree and bouncing onto this white paint. So I'm going to click there to get my overall whitish color. Then I'm going to go ahead and make another one, just double click right in here. Oh, press OK first. All right, and then I'll make another one. Just click right here. This is going to be for my midtones. So if I go somewhere in here that I know is a midtone color, which would probably be somewhere on these stairs, maybe right about here, give me a little bit darker green. And then with the blacks, I'm going to press OK, double click on the blacks, and make them a little bit more like a darker brown. 
and then press OK. Now I'm press Control Alt and then the plus sign to get myself a little bit bigger here so we can go back to our larger size image. And what you see is that we have a nice color tinge on the overall photo, but it's not quite where we need it to be. So I'm going to go to Color so that I can map this whole image out with those colors that I used for those areas. Still, a little too much. Let's drop the opacity down to 30%. So now we're making it somewhere. You can see that made quite the difference in some of those colors. It's very subtle, and every one of these little things that we're adding is a subtlety that's going to make this overall look. But like I said, don't worry about it too much. If you have Photoshop CC, just go ahead and download this action, and you're free to use it all you want. I'm going to go ahead and go to the curves here. And the curves, I want to make my darks a little bit darker. So I'm going to bring this over a little bit over here and get that darker look. Okay. And then I'm going to bring my midtones down just a little bit. Maybe drop the opacity here down to about 75%. All right, so now we're starting to really get into this. But one of the things that I want to look at now are the overall shadows in the photograph. And in the overall shadows of the photograph, it looks like they need to be a little bit more red. So what we can do to just get the shadows of the image is select our background layer, go to select and go to color range, and then go to shadows, press OK. So that's only, it's going to put racing ants all over the place, and it's all over the place for our shadows and our shadows only. So if I click back on top of that curves adjustment layer and then go to levels, what you're seeing here is that those racing ants that were all over the place have now disappeared. If we press Alt or Option on that mask though, that's next to the levels, you can see that this is only going to be affecting our dark, darkest dark areas. It's not going to be affecting our highlights too much, maybe a little bit into our midtones, but only our darkest darks. So what I'm going to do here with this is, is actually make the darkest darks just a little bit lighter by moving the curves over. Okay, and then I'm going to go into the red channel. And down here, I'm just going to bring that over a slight bit and then drop this down to about 40 to 50%. So you can see all of these things that we're doing are just adding very small subtleties to our image to get that overall look and feel that we want. So what I'm seeing here is that the hue, uh, the, the saturation of our red got a little out of control. So if I go down here and go to hue saturation, I can just drop the overall saturation just a little bit in the entire photo to kind of subdue some of that that color that's happening there. I'm going to the master channel here and then click on red and then just increase some lightness into our reds to kind of make our reds kind of push back a little bit. You want to have that kind of faded look to our reds. So I'll push that all the way over to the right over there. So then one of the two more things left to do. So the first thing I want to do before I finish this all up and get it all nice and tidy is press control shift alt and E. That's going to make a stamp. That's Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. That's going to make a stamp of everything that's below this. And I'm going to go to Filter, and then I'm going to go to Lens Correction, and go to Custom, and then put my vignette all the way over to give me that kind of dark glow around my photograph. Press OK. Now, one of the things that I'm seeing here is that my areas of white in this photograph, like right up here, you can see it. There's a nice green color that should be on some of these areas of white. There's a green area that should be on this area of white too. I'm still seeing true white here. So what I need to do is actually select my, go to select, go to color range and go to highlights. Once I select those highlights, press OK. Now we get the racing ants for all the highlights. So if I click solid color, and then click on something like a muddy green here, press OK. That's going to give me uh, a very uh, horrible look to those highlighted areas. So we need to fix that up a little bit. So we'll just take that and, and make that about 16%. So it's just very subtle, all right? And then if we actually go into the mask itself, we can feather the mask to kind of feather those edges in. And that's going to give us that overall look and feel of like the introduction to The Walking Dead. So you could be doing this to any photograph that you see fit. So now that you know all the hard work that went into that, let's see how this works on another photograph. So I'm just going to double click on a photograph, bring it into Photoshop real quick, and then I'm going to select that action. I'm just going to press play on that Walking Dead intro effect. 
it's going to duplicate that layer in case I'm working on it make sure I don't do anything I don't want to do to it it's going to make a whole new group and all that work that I just did is all going to be done for me on that photograph before and after we can open up another one another nasty old uh, building look press play now this action works, or this effect I should say, works particularly well on things that are dilapidated, old, beat up, and grungy and dingy. All right, so my name is Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com. If you want this action, go ahead and click on the link below if you're on YouTube. If you're on the website, it's going to be in the download link right above you. If you like this, please share it, uh, like it, comment on it, share the wealth spread the word around because I'm sure other people kind of want this effect on their images especially during this uh, Halloween season. Thank you very much.